what we kind of got away from, I think, was making like really barstool stuff. I feel like we made a lot of shit in the middle that never really stuck. This is the Token CEO Podcast. I'm Erica Nardini. I'm the CEO of Barstool Sports. It's Thursday, April 14th, and this is episode 211, which is pretty awesome. We're psyched about it. We're talking about the boardroom, so Hank is going to join me. We're going to talk about corporate Hank and the changes we're making at Barstool Sports. Hank will be here any second, but he had to go get his Adderall refilled, which... I'm generally supportive of. Speaking of having energy, just a quick shout out to Celsius Energy Drink. My favorite is the sparkling orange. Who was in my office yesterday? Oh my God. All right, so George, the new CFO, rent a CFO guy who's helping us, who I love. I love George. George is very fabulous. Every time you talk to George on Zoom, it's like a different gorgeous slash bizarro piece of art in the background. But anyway, so George shows up, sits down in the chair. We're having a meeting about the budget, which we don't have one. And then we're having a meeting about our forecast. We don't have a good one of those either. So all these things we're learning about finance. And George just sits down and literally chugs a Celsius. And he didn't ask. So I was like, literally watching. I was like, fuck, this guy's drinking my Celsius. But then I was also kind of happy. Seemed very much like it. So anyways, um, that's Celsius. It has zero calories. There's no sugar. It's a great energy drink. They've got a ton of flavors. You can have guava or watermelon or my sparkling orange or whatever George stole off my desk. If you go to Celsius.com, that's C-E-L-S-I-U-S, C-E-L-S-I-U-S, you can find a store near you, or you can get it at Amazon, Walmart, or Target, Celsius Live Fit. Okay, things we shouldn't talk about. So things we shouldn't talk about, I would say, is the, the reorg coming at Barstool Sports. Does everybody know that there's like a pending reorg? Do yeah. people know this? I feel like people know this. Pending, right? I think we've done a good job of like being up with people about it and pretty transparent about it. But essentially what we're trying to do is is to reorganize, not reorganize ourselves. That does sound very corporate. So corporate Hank will be a perfect addition to this. Uh, the reason we're doing it is that we want to make it easier to make great content. We want the content that we make to be the best, the best it can be. We want to make it easier to go sell that content to advertisers or to promote merch and t-shirts. And we want it to take less people with those people having more control, more autonomy, more freedom, more creativity. I mean, I feel like we kind of just over-engineered everything. We kept adding, it was like the MacGyver of a production department where we had like toothpicks and gum and like sticky wrappers and all these things added together. And there wasn't like, no one really knew who was in charge or what was happening or decisions when they were made never stuck. So we're going to fix that. On the sales side of the house, we need to clean things up because we need to get focused on revenue. Let's go, Hank. Okay, so talk about corporate Hank. We're in the boardroom section. You can talk about stuff you're not supposed to talk about. Yes, corporate Hank. Uh, it's obviously new. Uh, it's exciting. I think that it's not something I ever thought I would be doing when I was younger. But seeing how the company has grown and seeing other people do these jobs kind of opened my eyes to like, oh, I could do that. I, you know, maybe I could do that. And I'm really enjoying it. I think it's, yeah. I think it's like basically what I was doing on some level for part of my take and Barcel before part of my take existed yeah. and, and where it was just focused on, you know, before Barcel was big and Milton, it was just Dave and Dan and ideas for them. And then it was just ideas for part of my take. And now it's just like overall ideas for everyone, but that's kind of my wheelhouse. Yeah. I, I like. love that. I think the coolest thing is so like, if I were in your shoes, I bet you saw a lot of other people doing a whole bunch of jobs and you were probably like, what the fuck? I could do that job better. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I think so ins change is hard for people, obviously, like it, people like really get like, like we had a meeting today where we're talking and people get like all like pinchy about it. But the amazing thing about change is opening up new people and new ideas and new perspectives. And I think you've just done, and I'm, like, I love working with you. Like when you showed up on Slack, I like almost had a heart attack, but I'm like, this is so fun. Yeah. Like I want to work with Hank. Um, but I think you also have a really good sensibility. And also what we kind of got away from, I think was making like really barstool stuff. I feel like we made a lot of shit in the middle that never really stuck. And we need to be doing more pardon my takes and more Sunday conversations or more weird shit that actually resonates with people versus like, hey, can I have the podcast studio with a shitty gray background and make something out of that? 
Yeah, I think that's to you know to your point. I think that's what comes naturally to me. Like that, that's the easy part of of the job to me. Where before there was a lot of people that were kind of in those roles that were asking me questions, and and and, and like the question would get taken and kind of filtered down or whatever. And then by the time the idea came back, it was like a different idea where it's I'm more able to just be like, this is what we should be doing, yeah. and kind of making sure that it stays on the right course yeah. throughout the like sales and and yeah. stuff process. I think it's also really good that you'll be able to. It's like nobody ever wanted to bother you before. Right. And it like you weren't really wanting to be bothered before. And now you're like, hey, I've, you know, like I'll be a sounding board. I've got good ideas, you know? Yeah. And to the MB obviously is like kind of my, my partner in this. And yeah. she comes from the third floor. She knows everyone there. So it's like there already is the kind of like when we're together and it's like come to us, like they know MB. They know they can come yeah, to you her. Are they know they can and come respected. to us. And, yeah. and same with the content people yeah. for me. So it's like I feel like between both of us, we have like, a lot of really good relationships mm-hmm. on both sides mm-hmm. and and that helps just with like the communication and flow work. and like yeah. efficiency really are you seeing a difference like you've been doing this for probably like maybe a month now yeah i mean i think this i think the summer i think by the time like the summer and fall comes like that's where like the impact will be seen because it's like we have a lot of good ideas for the summer that i'm excited about and but i mean obviously it's like very you know it's been a short amount of time yeah. and we're still like going through a lot of just the initial meetings and orientation yeah. and stuff. And it's like getting to know everyone on all the different departments. Once that's done and it's like, then we'll just be kind of yeah. going forward. So I, I don't think it will be really like seen or felt for a while. A while. What's been most surprising? Being I, super honest. It, the the I mean, I just didn't know anything from the sales and marketing. Like everything I knew was just like stuff I knew from, you know, the sales guy in, in Milton and stuff. Like I knew how things work then. From Kaz. And, and yeah, Bubbly, my yeah. guy Bubbly, yeah. who's a great friend. He was like, a he, good he was, guy. I, I, sat yeah. in this, I sat in the room with him. Yeah. And yeah, so you're like, I know how he like, would tell me everything. He yeah. would go, I would, I literally like, it was, it wasn't, a, it wasn't offices. It was just a, a, a stairs and, and him yeah. and Dave would be like screaming at each other. And I would just be hearing, not like I was eavesdropping, yeah. but it was just like, I could hear it all. It. And Dave was, if I ever asked him questions, he would tell me like how things worked. Same with Lewis. So I knew I had a good understanding back in the day. Once we moved in, and moved to New York and the separate floors and stuff, I didn't really get involved or like didn't care. Like it was yeah. just like sales would do their thing and, and tell us. And I just so that has been a very eye opening mm. of like how many people we have and, and what everyone does. Like that's what me and MB have been meeting with everyone in all the different all departments. The different and it's just eye opening. Like it's impressive though, honestly. Like to hear it's like the the data team blew my mind when yeah, it was like it was cool. like, Hey, like how does the data work? And they're like, Here you go. And it was like, Holy shit, like we actually this have is, a lot yeah, of data. Like, this is insane. And yeah. it's like, you know, the sales stuff, it's like, you yeah. know, this is this is what we're target goals are and this is what like this sells for. And it's yeah. like, oh, like that's like we can build on that. And if like that's how that works, like we can, we can do that knowing again. that, it's like we can yeah. do that again and like yeah. I can I can help with that. Uh yeah, it's so, so funny. it's like that the just the the sales the sales and like data stuff really just blown my mind. Just yeah. like of like, oh wow, like we really are we have a good this operation. Is, yeah, this is something lots going on here. Um, the other thing that I think is, I'm so happy this is happening, but I'm also like, <clears throat> where it was like, it was such a coconut telegraph. Do you know what I mean? Like the game of telephone tag yeah. between the third floor and the second floor just gets like so watered down and messed up in between. And that's what I actually like is like, we're putting our most talented producer in charge of development for all of our productions, which is going to be amazing. Are you worried about part of my take? Like, are you worried about balancing the two? No, I think it'd actually be better for part of my take because because there was a lot of stuff that I was doing that was like, not mindless is, is not the right word for it, but no one knew I was doing it. Like when the show would end, I would edit it and, you know, that takes a long time. And like going back and forth with the talent bookers about guests and like working with the merch team, it's like... I was doing that and it takes up a lot of time, but no one knew that it's like, oh, that's, you know, we got Hank this guest because of Hank or we got this guest. Like someone else and, and, and memes and Liam have been really good at filling in for me and I'm, I am able to stay on top of them. Like I know what they need to do because I did it for so long, mm-hmm. but I have no problem with them doing it. And that opens up like 20 to 30 hours of my week, which I can just focus on this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm still on the show. And a lot of these ideas, obviously, part of my take is like the biggest, yeah, you're the like, biggest you put show. And so action. it's like, how can we make more money for part of my take? Like, I'm your guy. Who knows the yeah. answers to that? And who knows, like, you know, there's, because when, with, with, and I saw this a lot with, with salespeople and, and some people in the past where it's like, Dan does so much that they're scared. They don't want to ask him to do they more because they feel bad. And that's understandable. I'm obviously closer with Dan than anyone else here in the company. And I know his level. Like, I know 
he wants if if it's the right thing and he wants to do it, he'll be excited to do yep. it, and and then it will sell and all that stuff. So it's like, I have like you know who knows him and who will be yeah, able to like, go to I, him. You can like, understand how close he is. To yeah, this like threshold. the 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 Yak Idol is like the perfect example yeah. of like we had the Barcelona Idol, they wanted to sell it. Dave was like, I don't want to be involved, or I'm not going to be here. And it's like, how can we do this where it makes sense if Dave is like where he was kind of the, the person in of charge it. of yeah. it? How are we going to make this work? And it was MB was actually the one that said it. She was like, what if we did it for the Yak? And it was like. That's interesting. I brought it to Big Cat, and like I know because I go to him with a lot of stuff, and sometimes he's like, "Oh, like get away from me, get away from me." When his eyes like light up, and he's like, "Oh, like that's a we would love to do that." And then that night, he's texting me ideas, and it's like once his brain gets going, it's he gets going. going, and he's excited, yeah. and that means that it's going to be a great like you know video series, and people are going to love it, and and it's like that type of stuff where it's like maybe other people wouldn't go to him because they yeah, don't want to go to him and do it. it. But it's like, if it's something that it's not going to take up a lot of his time, he doesn't have to travel and he just has to yeah. do it here or whatever. Like I have a very, you know, probably the best read on, on him out there. So Bar none. I love that. I think it's true. Like Dan and Dave are funny like that. So like for anybody listening to this, like, that they, they're such an epicenter, but individual epicenters. And then together they, they're, unicorns like there'll never be another Dave Portnoy or Dan Katz but I think everyone is slightly afraid of the two of them mm-hmm. also wants them to be happy also really dependent on them and then nobody's forthcoming with like hey you had 50 I, we tried 50 things these 49 did not work but that one was great and I'm like it's saying nothing and avoidance is such a bad strategy here anyways to get something done like be honest. Like, if this idea sucked, like, Dave Portnoy, probably the most rational person I've ever met. Like, okay, Agreed. it didn't work. Why didn't it work? He may ask hard questions. He may, he he's acute in like, well, this didn't work because you didn't do that. You got to be willing to hear it. But I also think we kind of built, like, it, especially in production anyways, I think we built this culture of almost avoidance. Like, we almost shielded everything away from me dave or dan or dave and dan instead of being like hey just ask it's a two second conversation right and i've all i mean dave like obviously like i've i've learned so much from him but i've always loved like how bluntly honest he is and like that's something that i you know it's probably not like the corporate like but it's style but it's like if like that you you want a question like this is the answer like whether you like it or not like this is just this is how it is yep uh, so that's something, I mean, I've obviously taken a, taken a law from well, but like that, that, that like, it's like, all right, to... like, what are we doing? And it's like, does it, like, it's not, it's not the cat and mouse, like, email back yes. and forth and then yeah. a question that might take, like, a week to get back for an answer. It's like, I'm just going to call someone and, like, yeah. get an answer. Yeah, that's actually, a, so one thing on that is that I think the coolest thing for me is, like, in us working together the last six years, like, you're so confident now. Like, I think you were always confident. You always knew your shit, but you were like, I don't know about the rest of this, like, company thing. And now you're like, oh, I'm going to tell you how it's done. And I think you'll take Dan and you'll take Dave and you'll take all these influences around you to do that. Um, The other thing with that, though, that I think is, like, driving me nuts or that I think people can learn from is the, like, hey, can I get 30 minutes on your calendar versus the, like, just send me a fucking text or Slack me or call, God forbid, pick up the phone, call me, it'll be a 30 second conversation. Right. And I, I think that's, I agree with you. I think when you get into like, we're not that big, but you get to a bigger company like Penn or anybody, you like go to the meeting and then everybody just leaves the meeting. And if nobody picks up the ball, it just, whatever happened in the meeting just dies. And it's like, all right, I'm always like, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? And even here though, I think we're getting, like, I think y- you being involved is like, you're not a 30-minute meeting guy. Right. It's like, just call me, ask me the idea, I'll give you my opinion. Right, and I think on on my side, with like the con- same with the content people, it's like I always have a lot of close personal friends, friendships and relationships with a lot of these people. It's like, this is what the salespeople said, I'll, I'll text them or call them right away. Yeah. And like the same with MB on the sales, it's like she knows all of the people that, if it's like, let's just talk to the salesperson that uh, has who the Who has the answer right. for it? Yeah, I agree with you. I think us getting back to that will also make things much better like I kind of feel like people who love big meetings are people who hide in big meetings and it's like like we had a conversation this morning of like what is a producer and like let's not buy our own bullshit about like this is what's involved in being a producer this is like just be honest like that this is the job do the job or don't do the job yeah and obviously coming from the production side of things I think helps because it's like that 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 level of like you can't there's no smoke and mirrors that you can like get past it's like I know 
you know, I, I've done all of the stuff that you're talking about. Like, I know how long things take to do or like yeah. what if this is going to, you know, actually cost us much or whatever. Like, Yeah, that's right. That's actually interesting, which is production, line production, you cannot bullshit. Right. Like, right. you can't. Right. Like, 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 tech, like, if it's, like, tech or, like, you know, Stu could, like, say whatever he wants to me, I'd be like, okay, like, yeah. it's going to take a month. I'd be like, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah. But, sure. like, a video, you're like... If it's like, a video, yeah, if it's a video yeah. production, it's like, I know, you could yeah. say it's going to take a month, but I know I could tell you it's not. Yeah. And, and you can't really, like... I think that's the other thing for people's jobs, too, which is, like, you always want to be in a job where it's, like, you're doing the thing, not talking about other people doing the thing or talking about talking about doing the thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's also nice about how you come at it. What are you worried about? I don't know, babe. Everyone just calling me Corporate Hank and, and being mean to me. <laughs> everyone everyone eventually hating me. Oh, I don't think they'll hate you. Inside um, or outside? Like fans hating you? Or no, no, no. Just like people like, people? Uh, yeah, like, you know, like uh, kind of joking, but also like if, if all of a sudden like me and Big Cat starts to hate, like when I come up to him and I'm coming up to him with stuff, like yeah. obviously like that would I be don't bad. I think you will. Um, I mean, it's just still new. Like I'm yeah. just like trying to like stay on top of it and do, I, that's where it's like corporate, they say it as an insult, but I don't really think of it that way. Like, no, I'm I think it's cool. You're going to do a bigger job. Do all the meetings and like be yeah. here like, you know, more nine to five than yeah. before. Um, it's exciting. That's I, awesome. I don't, I, I, I get... When I, like, go home from work and stuff, it's, like, it, it is, and obviously, like, I just get excited, like, it's, like, oh, there's there's a lot of stuff going on, yeah. like, there's a lot of, it's not, like, it's hard to even explain this, really, not, I don't even really want to say it, but, like, it's not, there's just always new stuff coming on, totally. there's new things to figure out. Like, like your brain can chew on it. Right. Like, I like that about my job, is, like, I can always chew on something, right. like, like, I'm when, always thinking. When yeah. I get going, like, at night, it'll be, like, what's coming up, and it's, yeah. like, oh, yeah, and then you're thinking about a million different things. Um, what's coming up that you're excited about? I'm really excited about Idol, the dra the combine we're trying to do again. Like I don't know if that's it's not sold yet, but it's for the summer. And when it does get sold, I think we'll like knock that out of the park. Explain what that is. We, I mean, the first video I ever shot, actually, my first day at Barcel was <laughs> the original combine with McShay and Big Cat okay. and KFC. Classic Barcel video. Everyone loves it. Everyone, you know, it's a it's a it's a classic. It's a classic. One of the all time classics. So we're gonna do the Barcel combine. Um, I think we're doing three cone drill, the 40 quarterback throws, and broad jump. And we're going to see how we stack up if we're entering the NFL draft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what? <laughs> oh, my legs rock. Combine no, champion. Not my champ. left it first. I just gotta say, I knew it. It's it, that's when you have all the pieces added up. When you're the boss, the most athletic, best looking. When we moved to New York, this was before I was involved, and no one, you know, it was we did that 2017 was a shit show of like yeah. there was that the the you know production and sales like there was a lot. It's gotten a lot better, but back then it was like I think sales sold it. The production part oh, of it right, was a to shit Duncan show or to Duncan, and, and it, it, we did it, and it was in good. Like it did well, lot. but it was like it, the organization and pre-production and post-production was all chaotic, and like despite it doing well, it was like very, very not probably thought out. Wait, it was is just this one where they did the circus? No, that was the next year. Okay, that was that was almost worse. Yeah, there was the, the both, and that's because it was like it was coming from sales. It was and, like it was came it was coming too far from one and, place and or another. And production wasn't really at up up to speed as it is now, whereas now that you know MB and I are kind of leading the charge, it's like it'll be really well done. The, yeah. pe the content people, people that like the Barcelona content, will love it, and the sales people, it will like it'll, it'll be work a for lot, everybody. a much better executed like video that has like a proven you know formula of success is Coley going to come do it probably Everyone, it was, you know, Coley's yeah, vertigo, vertigo is one of my favorite things yeah. ever yeah uh, uh, what about yo is this on barstool that i mean that's that's something we've been working on forever like that's something that like obviously people are like oh this is a new idea like me and kb have because that's like me and gaz we used to have like tips.barstoolsports.com that people would just send ideas to for the blog and that's where people would send videos and and me and gaz used to sit in the office and and basically be like just read them and be like, I can't believe this person sent this in. And the caption was always like, yo, like, yo, Barstool. Yo, is like, this, can I get this on Barstool? You post this, dude. This is hilarious. It's like the worst video you've ever seen in your life. And we used to just do that, like, just back and forth in the office. And then that's what, I mean, it's the, probably three years ago, KB, I think, wrote a blog with a similar, like, his DMs. And people were like, and he wrote a very funny blog. 
and I talked to him. I was like, dude, like we should, because because it like instantly clicked. I was like, we used, to, we used to do this anyway. Show. Like yeah. we, we we I know how funny like it is, and how and how many like the amount of of trash we get sent like yeah. is is infinite. Um, so I was like, we should do something, and then you know for like probably two or three years, we'd be like, oh, like we'd like be drinking beers, like oh, we we gotta do that, man. Like we gotta do that, like. We should do that. Like we should do that. Like we should do that. <laughs> and then finally, like after football season was done, it was like, all right, like we're corporate we're, Hank, we're, we're doing, doing it. it. No, but this is even yeah, it was like before this corporate pain even. This but it's like pre crime. It was Hank. like we're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, football season's over. Like I have the time. Yeah. Like we have an editor. Like we're just gonna do it. It's so great. It's a good I, show. Yeah, I think I think yeah, we we shot the second one. Second one's even funnier. Like we're finding finding the rhythm and stuff. And I mean that's one where it's like we got to figure out. It's a Can good it be show. weekly? It could be weekly eventually, and it, we have to just figure out a better way to like for social where it's like it should do better on social. Where then it's, it's like, doing. Yeah, and that's just like that's just a time and like. Yeah. That's awesome. Figuring it out, but that's one I'm super excited about. Okay. And it's it's one that like people it's like oh that's a new corporate hand thing. It's like no like. That's actually. That idea came four years ago. Yeah. And like, You're like that just, was my life. And... The slowest developing idea maybe I've ever been involved <laughs> in, but I'm very happy that it's like out there now. I love it. All right, cool. So Hank, thanks for. Oh, I have this. Is your mother on Twitter? Probably. I have like this overwhelming desire to write your mother. I see it every every time I see you. I'm like, I have to write your mom. I had like the best conversation with your mom once when she came to like HQ. She's a saint. Oh, she's the best, oh. and she was like, I never thought Hank would do this, and I was like. Or Hank would make it. And I was like, Hank's better than making it. He's going to be like the best producer out of this generation. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it is a miracle from her perspective. Oh, it's so I awesome. But I have this like that. overwhelming desire to write her. I'm like so proud and excited. And I'm like, oh, she's going to be so excited. So, I'll like you guys up. Uh, do it. She may have to listen to this. All right. Thanks, Hank. Thank you. Before we move on, let's talk about Roback. So short personal story before we get into Roback. So I get an email today in my Gmail from someone who says, hey, um, I see that you have Roback stuff in the Barstool store. I would love for you to carry my brand or my product. And I was like, huh. So I like got the email and then I had like 15, huh. Like I was like, huh, all the time. <laughs> because, and I had to like bite my tongue where I was like, um, the last time that I talked to your husband, he called me a dyke because I played hockey and he was like, oh, women's hockey players are all dykes. That was legitimately the last conversation I had. And I literally was like, had my fingers in my mouth of like, I just want to write back and be like, would love to consider your product. But the last time I interfaced with your husband, he called me a dyke. So I don't think we'll be carrying your, your stuff in the Barstool Sports store. So we will not be carrying this competitive product from Robeck. What's awesome about Robeck, I actually wore my Robeck shirt, um, I wore it yesterday running, but it's awesome. First of all, they've got this cool stripe on the back of their activewear. So they make performance stuff. It's not too performancey. It's cut kind of great. They make a quarter zip, they make pullovers, all that kind of stuff. They've got a dog as a logo. Who doesn't love a dog as a logo? And then they have these two stripes on the back, which I think just makes it look premium and kind of vintagey. If you go to rhoback.com, and I really hope you do just by virtue of getting that email today. So go to rhoback.com and use code token for 20% off your order. Grace O'Malley, who is a newfound favorite, I uh, Grace O'Malley is joining us just as, as an aside. I wrote Grace O'Malley this morning for the first time since Grace has come to Barstool. I said, hey, Grace. Um, can I get time with you? Uh, I, I need time with you. Can you um, can you get back to me or something? And Grace writes me back and is like, I was going to edit from home today, but I'll be right in. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Like, you can come later. You don't need to come right now. And then next thing I know, Grace is in the office with the best Massachusetts accent I have ever heard. We hired Grace, so Grace is full time with us. Hi, Grace. <laughs> Hi. Um, all right, Grace, this is like a business podcast. So I'm not really sure this is your bag. Oh, but... I, have, I have studied this. Oh, many, you, you're, many you're in and you're like, this is definitely my bag. Okay, where are you from, Grace? <laughs> Boston. Ooh, obviously, but where? Um, so, South Shore, Boston. Oh, I love um, the accent. Give us a, can you tell us your town? Uh, Rockland, Pembroke. Okay, I love in the middle it. of high okay. school, so. Amazing. Yeah. Like the non-water side of Hingham kind of thing? Yes, exactly okay, that. Okay, I love that. Yes. Okay, so give us the Grace story. Uh, um, I'm the oldest of three, four girls altogether. Okay. Um, 
You had to think about that. Uh, yeah. I, I was like, well, if you count myself, okay, four. <laughs> um, I went to high school. I grew up with Brianna, best friend. Okay. And we've been friends since fifth grade. I moved in high school to a different school. Didn't love it. Didn't do very well. Okay. I, but you two are still best friends. Still best friends. Couldn't wait for the weekend to go hang Okay, go hang out. Yeah. Um, and Why so, did you hate high school? I... It, just didn't fit you. People just weren't very kind. Okay. It's the, I think it's the redhead ginger thing. Oh, I think you're such a babe. Well, I mean, back back then, kids yeah. could be pretty mean. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, and so I would just, I didn't do very well in school. I graduated high school with a 1.5. Okay, well, that's all right. Yeah. You're still graduating. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. So you get degrees. Okay. <laughs> um, and so my guidance counselor was like, you're going to have to either join the military or learn a trade. And I was like, okay. yeah, I don't like those options very much. <laughs> So and he, what he forgot was community college. So I went to community okay. college and then I transferred to UMass two years after. Okay. And I was I was this close to finishing. But uh, Brianna Should, said, came here? Brianna said, you want to move to New York with me? I said, stick a leap of faith on that one. That's so awesome. Are you going to so finish? It is so cool to be sitting right here right now. That's so awesome, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Grace. Good for you. Yeah. I mean, you could, life's about taking chances. Well, it is. It's, it's exactly about taking chances. <laughs> it is. Like, that's good for you. Thank you. Wait, so what would you, what would, would your, what would your degree have been in? Um, I wanted to go into advertising. Okay. I, I thought it was like a comfortable way to still be funny, but still make money in a okay. reasonable way. Okay, fine. That okay. That's what I was thinking. And then, so you come to New York on a flyer. What do your parents say? They're the most supportive people. Like, they, okay. they've always follow your dreams kind of thing okay. so and what about your younger sisters oh it's actually really funny to say that because i just found out that my sister my youngest sister she's eight she uh stole my mom's computer and made her own podcast that's awesome and she put it on youtube and i was watching it the other day and she said yeah i'm just following my sister's dreams i wish she was a little girl she wanted to be a podcaster i'm like those didn't <laughs> exist back then but that's fine that's <laughs> fine let me be your light yeah. and your inspiration that's so cute yeah no so they're pumped too how big is the age difference um so she's eight and i'm 23 oh my god so i'm like 15 years different Jesus, your and mother's she's been pregnant this... for a long time yeah Poor lady. Same. And she, same parents. That's everyone's big question. Yeah. It's okay. Same, same parents. parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. So then you, it's so funny because I remember hearing about you and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> where is somebody what does that like, mean? Brianna's roommate, <laughs> Brianna's roommate's very valuable to, like, to the show. It was all somebody said, like, Brianna needs a roommate for the show. And I was like, all, all right. <laughs> sure. That sounds good. Then enter you. So what do you do here? Um, I wear a couple different hats. I okay. got hired um, freelance for production. Okay. And then I jumped into social and I would say I do a little content too. Yeah. Now you're, so. you're becoming more content, I yeah. think. Don't you think? That's, do you like that? Oh, I love that. that That's was, always what you wanted. When I, when I first got hired, they said, we'll try not to do the content thing. And oh, really? They were yeah. like, don't be, don't be on screen? It was actually, uh, please do not be on screen. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, really? And it was, I was like, well, this is kind of awkward because I have... Been asked kind of in the to story. finally be on it, and yeah. um, and so I just like I was I was just doing what I was told, and I it, it worked out. Oh my god, it really did work <laughs> out. Worked so out. now you're gonna work here. You're gonna like have a contract. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm so I'm excited. So, excited. <laughs> so um, we put the story in the beginning. I was saying how this morning I wrote you, and then you were like, I was gonna edit from home today, but I'll be right in. And I'm like, no, 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 you 15, don't need to come 15 in. Minutes. And you were literally here with the coffee. For me, yes. which is nobody does that. You're the best, Grace. I try. I'm on a higher. Isn't that so sweet? Yeah, what are you assholes doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I cinnamon. even I looked on your Instagram. I'm like, she, she put cinnamon in there. I'm just gonna get her cinnamon coffee. It, but from this morning, I had an Instagram post in my work like a girl mug where I had cinnamon in it. Grace, yeah. you're observant. No, or I'm a kiss ass. Who knows? No, <laughs> either way, we'll take it. Um, okay, so what makes you special? Do you think? Um, I've I've my greatest quality is my humor okay that's that's what i pride myself on okay that's, and what kind of humor do you have um self-deprecating for sure okay um but also just like uh like the whole boston thing yeah. i run with that having yeah. a 
crazy Irish family. Yeah. I, I dabbled into stand up a little bit. I did a okay. show with Lil Sass one time. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Lil Sass, that fucker, just pretends he's not at work and then just goes and does comedy shows. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to speak yeah, on yeah, Mr. No. Sass. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you kicked that one. I'm, I'm in a good, good, good spot here. <laughs> 100%. Okay, and then I think you have good energy, don't you think? Like you make, I, I think you make people comfortable. I do. I And yeah. if I'm uncomfortable, it makes people comfortable. I don't know. I, oh, okay. I, 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 like I feel like I charm? look like a little nervous right now, but everyone's smiling. <laughs> oh no, you look great. Okay. You look great. Um, and then what's your dream? Um, that's a great question. Uh, Brianna and I have been qu- living quite a... You've been living an adventurous life. An adventurous life. That's I listened to, to, yeah, to the episode last week by the time this comes out. Oh. You guys are busy. Yeah, we've been busy. So busy. why don't you give for this group some cliff notes. We'll do an advertisement for the life and the show. Oh, gosh. Well, it is a show. It is a show. <laughs> um, so... Brown and I. Is this a, oh, the, oh, the, oh, this. Yes, this. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the whole spiel. I, um, so when we're not on tour, we're hanging out with our New York friends. It's a bunch of boys. We love hanging out with boys, boys. and girls. Less drama. The, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and you all try, have tattoos. Yes. Uh, how lucky are we? <laughs> how lucky are we? Okay. So how many is it? How um, many are in the group? There is six of us total. Four boys, and then me, Brianna and I. Okay, great. And you all met in New York City. We did. Yeah. Okay. You met post breakup. Post Nick and Brianna break up? Um, after New Year's Eve. After so New Year's Eve. We're okay. all very fresh new friends, but we just got along. We never stopped hanging out. Okay. So we just got along really quick. Okay, and... you have like a group chat? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. And we got to know each other really fast. And um, Nick got kicked to the curb, unfortunately. Nick is the boyfriend. Yes. Yeah, okay. And so boyfriend Nick kicked to the curb, moved What's to Nashville. Was he in the friend group? He or... was. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah, okay, so it's they're messy. dropping like fries. Okay. Y- yeah. Okay, so Nick's. Brianna is like a. Um... Like the praying mantis. Yeah, well, you know she's got I mean? some magic power to her because she has, and she, now she has boobs. So it's oh like, my god, it's like double whammy. Yeah, <laughs> but um, she she's got this magic gift to her that okay. if she just looks at a boy in the eyes, they are they madly in love, love and they want to tell her they love her right away. Okay, it's crazy. Very cool. Okay. So for anyone, <laughs> so that's great for for anyone who is following this, there's like. There's kind of like a love triangle situation, yes. and then it, there's just a lot going on. Uh, Jake's one rule the whole time was that no matter what happened with me and him, with me and Jake, Jake said, you cannot fuck Josh. You cannot hook up with Josh. Like, that's my best friend. I will never talk to you again. You'll be dead to me. And I was always, like, reassuring him, of course. Why? Like, I would never fucking do that. That's your roommate. That's your best friend. That was never going to fucking happen because me and Josh never really spoke. It was never a thought in my head. I never, ever in a million years thought I was going to end up hooking up with Josh. (laughs) We have the four guy friends. She's cadoodled with two of them already. Um, well, including Nick or? Oh, Nick excluded. So three, oh, <laughs> three. so there was five and now there's four. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> they're, okay. they're dropping okay. like flies. I'm okay. sorry. I'm Good not percentage. really given the the best spiel here. I am a little nervous, I guess so. Why? I don't know. I just want to do this right. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about your roommate hooking up with people. Like, how right can we get? On a business podcast. Um, okay, so wait. The other thing, though, I really, I really loved about Grace, though, is I like I, I didn't know much about Grace, and then I, there was this one day where I had an absolute fucking nutty mm. because Brianna. So for anyone who is listening to this, like Brianna came in pretty much out of nowhere, and she was electric. Like there's something about her that is. She's just very electric. I think she's a very raw, special, special talent and a great person mm-hmm. um, and very real. And she's of this moment in a way that I think is so special. So anyways, so everything Brianna was touching like was turning to gold. And it was like, you know, hundreds of T-shirts and the sweatshirts and the hungover brand and sleep, you know, sleep when you're dead, everything. So long story short, I somehow overheard people in the hallway talking about the merch pop-up on the college tours Mm. or no I think Brianna had come to see me and she was kind of like sheepish about it and was like hey do you have a minute she hates to ask hates to ask (laughs) do you have a minute like can I can I, I you know I feel weird about this whatever and then long story short you guys are all fine coach on an airplane you're showing up at a location you and TiVo the video guy and Brianna go to Walmart to buy a folding table you have clothing racks you're you're like renting the car going to the walmart getting the tablecloth setting it up 
And I am like, we are selling like hundreds of thousands of dollars of merch and like we make these fucking kids go to Walmart and, and like set up the table. The funniest part about the whole thing, for three months when we were doing it, I didn't even work here. I was, <laughs> you guys were just paying for my flights. I mean, that's ridiculous. At, at, at Did most, you pay for it, your own hotel? Um, I just slept with Brianna. <laughs> I just cozy on up. No, but it's, it's a great coming. Like, it's a coming up story. It's yeah, this is a great coming up story. The folding table to selling to out. now big contract. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's go, Grace. <laughs> um, who do you think your celebrity stunt double is? Oh, I would. I would hope it's Lindsay Lohan. Really? I, I mean, you're so much better than Lindsay Lohan. Thank you. Thank you. I very think much. you're like Joan Cusack. Who, oh, who you're probably too young to know who I that is. I know Joan Cusack. Joan Cusack is amazing. Yes, she is. Did you ever watch the movie Working Girl? I, I no. want to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Joan Cusack is, is you have to watch it. You, you would actually really love it. It's a really sweet film. But Joan Cusack, Melanie Griffith is the secretary. And she has like a come up where she, you know, she does this big M&A transaction, blah, blah, blah. And her best friend from Staten Island is Joan Cusack, who's got the hair and the eyeshadow and the nails and this accent, which is just to die for. And is very funny. Okay. I know I, she's funny. So on, you're just like her, I think. On a rainy day and my, my big my big day, I'm going to yeah, go watch that. Yeah, slippers on. There you go. All right. Well, Grace, um, anything else we can do for you? No, this has been great. Do you want to plug your... <laughs> the best day ever. Oh, okay, great. Do you want to plug your, like, social handles or the show? Yes, of course. Um, So I just changed them all. It's Grace K. O'Malley, O-M-A-L-L-E-Y, except for Twitter. They wouldn't let me have that. I know, that. that's so annoying. A little yeah. elementary school teacher took it from me, so... Okay. All right. <laughs> Grace, Sorry. thanks for doing this. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for having me. Way to go. I'm glad thanks you're for the job. You're welcome. <laughs> you can thank Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy texted me last night. This was actually the best. This is so me and Dave Portnoy. So Dave texted me last night and says, is O'Malley full-time, O-M-A-L-L-Y. <laughs> then it's ZQ. There's the next text bucket is ZQ. We should put her on a contract for this amount. <laughs> then I was awesome. like, great, I'll, I'll have that done for tomorrow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, Grace, well, congrats. Much. All right. All right. So how cute is Grace? I mean, Grace is just the cutest. Um, if you want to look cute, Uncommon James is good for you. I am big into the pineapple peptide nectar. It, can you imagine saying that like three times fast? Pineapple peptide nectar. What's awesome about Uncommon James is that it was created by Kristen Cavallari, a woman who knows about being cute. They've got all sorts of products. I'm obsessed with the chapstick. It's like a big, like like the chalk you played with when you were like in kindergarten. You like It's like that for your lips, which is amazing. It's a balm. They've got moisturizer, they've got cleanser, they've obviously got the pineapple peptides, they've got all sorts of great products. They smell great, they work great, the packaging is amazing. I love the font, I'm always a stickler for that. If you go to uncommonjames.com and you use code TOKEN10, that's T-O-K-E-N 10, you can get 10% off your Uncommon Beauty and Uncommon James order. So go do it now. All right, so Q&A. First q and I'm applying for a job with a big company and I've been instructed to email my resume to the vice president directly. I'm assuming execs are flooded with emails daily, so how do I get them to look and care about mine? When is the best time of the week to send the email and do you have any tips for standing out? Ooh, great question, I love this. Okay, I, I love the timing question. I think timing is everything. If someone emails me when I'm bored or just like on the train or looking for stimulation in, in my inbox or on Twitter or whatever, I'm most likely to respond to that email. So I think that's a smart way to think about things. Personally, I would send the email early in the morning. There's not a lot of clutter in somebody's inbox. They're fresh. They're opening up their day. The second thing is you've got to have a good headline, a subject line of your email. So you can't be like, you know, don't be lame, don't be boring, it, you know, but you want to say, you know, I don't know even what you want to say. Maybe you want to put your name and the job you're applying for, um, or you want to say consideration for, for whatever the role is, or a referral from so-and-so and such-and-such, if there's somebody who you know knows the vice president. But I think the biggest thing is to have a subject line that clearly describe, describes the job you're looking for and possibly has your name on it. Two is I would shoot that email at like 7.27 a.m. and try to get to the top of somebody's inbox. And then you want to make sure that your email that you sent with your resume 
states clearly, hey, I'm submitting application for this job. I'm really interested in this, in this company for XYZ reason. Um, I'm impressed by ABC results that you're having. And here are three reasons why I think I'm qualified uh, for qualified to have a further conversation. And I look forward to hearing from you. You could be cute and go find out, you know, all about that VP on LinkedIn and put something personal in the email of, you know, hey, I see you went to X college and I know I went there too, or something like that. But I think that stuff kind of matters less. I think you need to be clear, you need to be succinct, um, you need to be direct. And you also want to be a big advocate for why you should be considered for the role. And I think so long as your email does that, you should be able to stand out. The other thing you could do if you're thinking about it is also send your e send your resume and cover letter in like gasp the mail, like send it in the mail, send it. You know, somebody literally just sent me flowers today looking for a communication intern job. Can you imagine? How can an intern have money for flowers, which is amazing. But if you also want to stand out, one, send the resume to the VP, have it go to their desk. Two, if you're really interested or you want to be creative, send something with it. So you want to, you want to be careful not to try too hard, but I think you should go as far as you can possibly go to make sure that person has a chance to see it and to read it. Second question, I've been working at my company for five years and I'm looking to relocate. We have an office in the city but that I would like to locate to. However, there isn't technically a position open there right now, but I could do my current job at this new location. I brought up my desire to relocate in November and I haven't heard anything new since then. How do I say politely that my lease is up in the fall and if I'm unable to relocate with this company, I will, start, I will want to start looking for a new company in my desired city? What do you think? Okay, so one, first, credit to you for moving to a new city. Like, good for you. Everybody should move cities in their lives. Um, the second thing is, I think you should be blunt and firm and also receptive to what your company has to say. So you might say, hey, I wrote you this in November. I love working for this company. I've loved my job here. I really feel great about everything we've accomplished together. I've learned a lot from you as my hiring manager, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then I would say, hey, I really would like the opportunity to continue my work here in pretend it's New York City. I'd love to continue my work in New York City. I know that, that my role doesn't technically exist in the New York City office, but I really believe that I can stay connected. My work will only improve because blah, 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 blah. And I'm really committed to making sure that I maintain, if not exceed, the level of work that I've been doing now. So I think you just come out with it like that. Give your manager a chance to think about it and to come back to you. And, and I think you want to be firm and productive and proactive in putting a time in front of them. So you might want to say, I'd love to get your read on if this can happen by the beginning of next week. Um, if your manager avoids this or evades it, which managers are kind of prone to do, you can bring the issue back up on the day of, you know, the day after your deadline. And then at that point, I think you say relocating is really important to me. Uh, I'm going to be moving my leases up. I would love to stay here. But if that's not possible, then I really will need to, then I'm going to have to look for a new opportunity in a different company. What I would also say is you might want to get ahead of that and start doing that now. So the chances are you might be able to collapse both of those two conversations into one and have a bigger conversation with your manager. I think you have to be respectful if they're like, no way, we don't do that here. We could never, you know what I mean? Companies stink like that. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is be prepared that they're going, be hopeful that they're going to say yes, be committed if they do say yes, but also be prepared if they're going to say no, and you might want to start laying the groundwork of what looking for that next job might, might be and might entail. So before we let you go, instead of doing circling back, we're showing you new merch. So we've got Work Like a Girl shirts. Moon Man Sam made our print. I love it. I think these look sick. They kind of look like Redone, which is a brand that I love and I like to wear. I'm going to be wearing this all the time. I think it's cute. I think it's kind of cropped. You can wear it to go out. You can probably wear it to work. You can wear it wherever you want. These will be in the Barstool Sports Store. 
You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can join our Facebook discussion group. You can listen or watch to watch Work Like a Girl, which we're dropping on Tuesdays. You can follow me at Erica. You can follow Token CEO everywhere. And we'll see you back here next week. <laughs> <laughs>